Last year, I looked at SVS's prime bookshelf speakers, and I was very impressed with them in a lot of ways, but I was also a little bit, I don't wanna use the word disappointed because I definitely wasn't, it's just they didn't sound like how I expected an SVS designed or made speaker to sound. Well, great news with the Ultra bookshelf speakers, they very much sounded like how I expected an SVS speaker to sound, but are they any good? <laughs> Let's find out. Yes, the Ultra bookshelf speakers definitely hit my expectation mark in terms of how I thought a speaker would sound coming from a company like SVS. And I feel like they are definitely and clearly a step up over the prime bookshelf speakers in some certain key and critical areas. I feel like there's probably some design principles shared across the speakers as you would expect, but as I mentioned, in key areas, I feel like the Ultras are definitely a step up over the primes. If that's of any help or use to you, if you're trying to decide between the two speakers, whether the Ultras are worth the extra, or maybe you're considering upgrading from the prime to the Ultras, well, hopefully this review will help you some. But that's definitely not what we're concentrating this video on because this is review number nine from nine different stand mount speakers that I've been comparing in one big speaker group mega test. And this is it, the finale review, or is it? More on that at the end. And as this is the ninth review, I will be comparing the SVS Ultra bookshelves to all of the other speakers reviewed in the group test so far. And that means comparing them to the Kef LS50 Meta, the Bukar S300 Mark II, SE, the ATC SCM11, the Anthium Argon 1, the Acoustic Energy AE500, the Neat Acoustics Motive SX3, the Sonos Faber, Lumina 1, and the Ophidian Mojo 2. And all of these speaker reviews are already up in my YouTube channel and they're easily found on the home page. And does competition get any stiffer than that? Probably not. And I'm sure you are already very familiar with SVS as a manufacturer and as a company, but how do you feel about them? Do you feel they are a home theatre speaker and home theatre subwoofer manufacturer? Or do you think they are a hi-fi and home theatre speaker and subwoofer manufacturer? And that is not a trick question, and it doesn't really matter because obviously any speaker and any subwoofer can play music or it can play movies. That's not really important. But I think what might be important is, do you think there might be a different set of priorities as part of the design for a speaker that's predominantly designed for home theater or predominantly designed to be used to listen to hi-fi or stereo two-channel music? And I just want you to hold that thought for a minute. The SVS Ultra are a £999 rear-ported two-way speaker that's pretty large among its peers, almost Bukar S300 large, which means they are quite a bit larger than the LS50 Meta, the Acoustic Energy AE500, the Neat Acoustics, and on and on. You get the idea. And I think that does really matter here because they do look large up on speaker stands, and that no doubt has an influence on their overall performance and they feature a six and a half inch composite carbon fiber mid bass driver and a one inch aluminium tweeter with its little donuts on the front. And they are crossed over at two kilohertz, which is really quite low and interesting. And the cabinet, despite being a nightmare to get on camera because it's high gloss black and very reflective, is shaped quite unusually, but quite on purpose for performance reasons, not aesthetic. And that includes the shape of the speaker grills, which I didn't use for this review because I always prefer to go commando where possible. On the rear of the speakers are dual speaker cable binding posts, should you wish to buy amp or buy wire. I did find it quite fiddly installing speaker cable jumpers, and I really do wish that speaker manufacturers would stop recessing their speaker cable terminals into the back of speakers, because that is so 1980s. <laughs> and setup of the Ultras really couldn't have been any easier. I literally placed them down on the stands that have been in place in my room for the whole group test, and I listened to them, and they sounded right straight away. And I couldn't believe it. I'm sure you're probably not believing me either. So I spent some time messing around with the left speaker thinking that maybe I could improve how they sound. And I made it noticeably worse before I think putting it back to where it started and then things sounded right again. And I did some measurements as part of a full Dirac Live 
calibration. And here is likely why they sounded so right. That is a pretty outstanding set of in my room measurements above where the room starts to ruin things. And from 500 Hertz and upwards, there is a few things going on, but in the main, that is a pretty linear and smooth response. There is a slight dip in the crossover-ish area and a slight recession in the treble region, but beyond that, really, it's very textbook and very impressive. It's even looking better than Kef's LF50 Meta for smoothness and overall extension in the treble. And you can likely see why SVS have crossed over at two gigahertz for a similar reason to, I think quite a lot of the manufacturers in this group test are doing this, is because the tweeter behaves better in that upper mid-range region than the mid-base drivers do. Because you are asking really a lot of a mid-base driver to do both low and higher mid-range frequencies at the same time, such as the two-way speaker quandary. And then bass is really interesting because if you look at the measurement next to the Bukart S300 Mark II, you can see the Bukart had much better bass extension. Then because of room acoustics, the ultras look to measure very similar to a lot of the other speakers. But in practice, I feel like the ultras have been the closest sounding speaker in terms of bass substantialness and fullness and impact to the bass king of this group test, the Bukart S300 Mark II. <laughs> For their overall sound quality and performance, I would say the Ultras are somewhere in between the Bukart S300 because of that bass, but not the rest. And then they are a bit of a standout enigma for the rest, but probably closest sounding to the ATC SCM11 because the ATC are also a very direct sounding speaker. And initially listening to the SVS Ultra bookshelves, I was really struck and impressed by how big they sound, how solid and full and substantial the bass sounded, how lively, energetic, and really, yeah, big in scale they sounded. And that was quite a polar opposite sound presentation to the speakers I've been listening to for the weeks prior. The one that pops into mind is the Ophidian Mojo 2, which have a very open and quite a delicate presentation. And the difference between that type of presentation and the very direct sound from the SVS took me quite a bit of time to adjust. And let's start with the strengths of the Ultras. And the first one is bass. It's big, solid, full, and I really liked it. It could maybe be a bit tighter, but it's definitely impactful and impressive for a stand mount speaker. And it's much more substantial sounding than a lot of the other speakers in the group test, even more substantial sounding than the Acoustic Energy AE500. And I was really impressed with them for bass. So that showed me this quality about the Ultras. And yeah, it's an SVS speaker, so we expect big bass, right? Well, <laughs> yes. And that is one of the key differences I feel between the Ultra and the Primes. The Ultras will give you a much bigger, more substantial bass. And the second big strength of the Ultra is the size and scale of sound. Every element of sound they create within a sound stage is large. I think their presentation made me feel very close to the music, literally physically very close to it. And there is that famous hi-fi phrase, getting you closer to the music. And I think that can be interpreted in quite a few different ways. And I suppose really being very close to the music, there is a lot to be said for that in terms of a presentation. I actually quite like the close and upfront presentation when it's done well. And the third major strength is detail. The ultras sound very honest and direct with very good timing. They are not trying to sugarcoat anything or create a fantasy music soundstage wonderland in front of you. They are giving you music honestly. And that aspect of their sound presentation, I think will likely divide opinion because it definitely divided my opinion because as much as I appreciate and liked feeling quite close to the music and, you know, able to hear clearly you know lots of things that are going on sometimes with the ultras the soundstage did feel maybe a little bit compressed i'm not sure compressed is the right word maybe it just felt a little bit oppressive on me as the listener as i mentioned you know i've been listening to some speakers prior that gave a very open soundstage that make you feel really quite relaxed when you're listening to music and there are other speakers in the group test i feel that have quite a direct sound but their soundstage isn't as oppressive sounding as the ultras are. And I think a big part of this is the treble delivery because the treble is detailed, definitely not too present for specific individual details and not harsh 
at all. When I think the tweezer and treble is a definite improvement with the ultras over the primes. And the treble is very lively and energetic sounding, which brings a lot of energy to music and scale. But I think it's lacking some of the really nice musical qualities of the better tweeters in this group test, such as the tweeters in the ATC SCM11 and Ophidian Mojo 2. So the ultras are sounding lively and energetic and large, big in scale, and that can work really nicely for certain types of music, maybe Christine and the Queen's albums, where she has, you know, big punchy bass and lots of stuff going on. Having a direct sound for that type of music can be really impressive and really enjoyable. But if you're listening to, say, Alison Russell, more soulful music with this big, rich, soulful voice, those types of music and albums are all about kind of relaxation and, and, and maybe giving you what I call a musical cuddle with this beautiful soulful voice. Well, then it's really important for a speaker system to be able to change gear, to go from being very direct to being more relaxed and soulful and, and rounded and cuddly. And I feel like the ultras didn't quite have enough of a second gear to change from that very direct, lively, upfront communicative type sound to go in the other way and being really soulful. But before we get too down on the SVS Ultras in that regard, it's possible that their very neutral character combined with the amplifier I'm using in this group test, the Lima Tucana 2 Anniversary, which also has a very neutral sound character, which is why I'm using it. Maybe that just wasn't the right pairing. To confirm I had this all correct, I did some comparative listening between the Ultras and the Acoustic Energy AE500, which I thought might have a similar sound character. However, the difference between these two speakers was incredibly marked, and that really hit home to me what the Ultra is all about, because they sounded larger, more substantial in their bass, and their vocals sounded pretty massive, actually, by comparison. And when I switched to the AE500, the scale of sound wasn't there, but the vocals from the AE500 were so much more relaxed, with more space around them. And they just had that sweet and soulful character when it needed to be there with the music. I feel like the overall presentation from the Ultras is a little bit of an enigma in this group test, but I do have to remind myself of their design goal. I feel like they are probably the only speaker in this group test that will be designed very much with home theater use in mind, probably predominantly or main priorities of home theater use. Whereas the other speakers in this group test, yes, I'm sure there are some of you using them for home theater duties and they have, you know, or are a part of ranges of speakers that have center speakers and subwoofers. So they are designed with home theater use in mind, but I feel like their priorities or the priorities for the other speakers in this group test will all be two channel stereo hi-fi used first, home theater second. Whereas the ultras, I think are probably home theater first and maybe hi-fi second. And has that had an influence on SVS's priorities when they're designing them? I think possibly, very, very possibly. And I feel like as a dual use speaker system for home theater and hi-fi, the ultras are gonna make, and they probably are making a lot of audio files, very happy. And I feel like some audio files will really like their just general two channel music presentation. And there are definitely bits about their presentation that have been very impressive and they have definitely hit my expectation mark of what I expected from an SVS speaker. They definitely haven't sure changed me in that regard at all. And I feel like they are a very clear step up in some really key areas over the prime bookshelf speakers that I've mentioned a few times. So that is it. That is the ninth speaker of a nine speaker group mega test. But you know what? I'm not happy about finishing this group test on an odd number because it makes doing you know, sound demonstration videos between two speakers very, very difficult. So what comes next? Well, the 10th speaker in this group test, which is going to be the Dyne Audio Evoke 10. So that will be the next review, and that will be the final review of this group test. 10 is a very nice round number. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe to the channel because you want to go back and check all these other reviews and all my other videos, and you definitely don't want to miss any new ones that are coming. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you.